West Virginia Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger joins us now. She's also a candidate for governor in Virginia. Congresswoman, thank you very much. Reproductive rights, a top issue for many across the country, especially because of the ruling by the Alabama State Supreme Court, uh, partially fixed by that legislature last night, just in time for tonight's speech. But it doesn't deal with the ruling by the state court that an embryo is a live person. You know, it just deals with the penalties and the repercussions, uh, potentially. And just this week, exit polls from Virginia's Super Tuesday primary show 54% of Republican voters there oppose a federal law banning abortions nationwide. You've also pledged to protect reproductive rights in your campaign for, for governor in Virginia. So what are you hoping to hear from President Biden tonight on this? How important uh, is this issue tonight? This is an important issue for the president to speak about in tonight's State of the Union because it's an important issue uh, for voters and for Americans. And certainly in the wake of the Alabama Supreme Court ruling, we saw just how quickly uh, our rights can further be eclipsed, not just access to abortion and reproductive rights, uh, but access to IVF. And in the wake of that uncertainty, we saw within Alabama, IVF clinics, fertility clinics shutting down and telling families and women who had long dreamed of growing their family that indeed they were putting a halt, a pause on their IVF procedures because of this ruling. Um, and so it's an important step that uh, Alabama has made a state law to try and address the impact of this ruling. Uh, but there are 49 other states where we must contend with the reality that extreme politicians and folks either on Capitol Hill in state capitals or on judicial benches might further endeavor to restrict a woman's ability to choose how and when uh, she begins her family. And this is a very foreseeable outcome of the Dobbs decision and one of the reasons why for now two years, uh, so many of us have been advocating for the basic freedoms of women to make their own choices uh, themselves with their medical provider uh, and those within their closest circles. These are not decisions that should be left to politicians or judges. And on the foreign policy front, the speaker is stalling. He's basically not letting it get to the floor. The security package that would deliver aid to Ukraine as well as to Taiwan to Israel. But you were part of a bipartisan congressional delegation that visited Ukraine last month. Yesterday, President Zelensky said that air defense is a critical priority. And in fact, he was very close, just you know, maybe a couple hundred yards from a, a strike that killed five people in Odessa when he was being, meeting with the Greek prime minister. So what prospects do you think there are for actually getting that aid to Ukraine and some sort of a supplemental uh, in time? Because Russia, as you know very well, is making you know, critical advances. That's right. And last month I was in Ukraine. I met with President Zelensky with a bipartisan group of members and it was there that uh, the House Intelligence Committee Chairman, uh, Chairman Turner, uh, spoke about his commitment to ensuring uh, that the aid to Ukraine moves through the House and ultimately uh, gets to the Ukrainian people as they continue fighting their war for freedom, their war against Russian aggression, their war that is, frankly speaking, in in U.S. national security interests. And the reason we have not yet been able to provide that aid to Ukraine or aid to Israel or humanitarian aid, additional humanitarian aid to Gaza and to the West Bank and support to our Taiwanese partners is because Speaker Johnson refuses to bring a bill that passed the United States Senate 70 to 29. So 70 Democrats and Republicans joined together, passed that bill in the United States Senate. It would pass the United States House of Representatives the day that Speaker Johnson chooses to bring it. And the only reason that bill hasn't gotten to the president's desk, the only reason that aid has not been delivered to our partners is because Speaker Johnson refuses to bring it. Uh, that is detrimental to our own security as well as our security partners. Um, and I do hope that tonight in the State of the Union, uh, President Biden makes a clear call for the United States 
United States House of Representatives to do what the United States Senate has done, pass that bill in a bipartisan fashion, and ensure that it gets to the president's desk. Frankly, it is not an overstatement to say that democracy within Europe depends on it. American values and our commitment to democracy depends on it. The role of U.S. global leadership depends on it. And our own national security depends on it. I'm a former CIA officer, and I will tell you, President Xi in China is watching, the Iranians are watching, and Vladimir Putin is watching. We must pass this legislation, and I hope to hear the president call on the speaker to bring it for a vote. And do you think this will, I mean, be a direct call uh, on the speaker who will be standing right behind him? And the fact that Donald Trump was the person really pulling the strings, according to everyone's accounts, right. that it was he That's who right. said, kill this bill. That's right. That, that is according to all accounts, because I will tell you, I have many colleagues on the other side of the aisle, Republicans, who very clearly understand the stakes um, of this legislation, who very clearly want to vote for it. Uh, but yet it is Donald Trump and now Speaker Johnson uh, who are standing in the way. And to say that this is doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin is not an overstatement. Uh, because this bill would pass if it received an up or down vote. And so the fact that the speaker, and ultimately at the behest of former President Trump, would stand in the way of its passage is absolutely detrimental to our own country's national security priorities.